seated. Good evening and welcome to the June 2015 adult education graduation. Welcome to oh. A lot of enthusiasm tonight. We welcome the students, parents, teachers, support staff, the admin team, Superintendent Greenboard, Greenberg, and the school board. Thank you for coming tonight to celebrate with us. To get started, Mr. Jason Parent, our principal, will lead us in saying the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. As we begin, I'd like just to take a moment to thank all the people who make this night happen. First and foremost, for all of her tireless organization and work for the program, Mrs. Mitchell. She's hiding back there. Whether it's calling to check in on the graduates, tally, tallying data, making floral arrangements, or keeping House 3 stocked with snacks for the student, Mrs. Mitchell does it all with grace and compassion. As for the logistics of this night, First, thank you to the custodial staff for their setup. It takes hours to make it look like this in the CAF. Thanks to Mr. Susi for tonight's music. Thanks to Counselor Mrs. Nelson and the teachers who make this program work, who do whatever it takes to make sure the students in this program are supported and successful. Thank you to the ad administrators and board members who recognize the importance of this program so that the needs of all of our students are met. And finally, and most importantly, thank you to the graduates and their families who, no matter what, never gave up in their relentless pursuit of their high school diploma. Tonight, we come together to celebrate the success of these extraordinary students, some I've known for years, and I couldn't be happier for the joy I see on their faces and the faces of their families tonight. Each of the graduates has learned and achieved what they needed to in order to graduate, yet each of them also added content to the program as well. That is why we enjoy working with all of you. Why being part of this program matters, because each of you has shared life lessons with not only your classmates, but also the faculty invested in adult education. Victoria teaches us to work hard. Katie and Sean teach us the value of making a plan that best suits their individual goals. Declan teaches us the value of having one's own sense of style. <laughs> Anthony teaches us the importance of honesty, as we can always count on him to really tell it like it is. Meg teaches us the value of enjoying reading and writing, that there is joy in lifelong learning. Curtis and Adam teach us not to take life too seriously, because things have a way of working out. Skyland reminds us to appreciate the beauty of life and art, Nick and Joe remind us that natural charisma and charm can go a long way in connecting with all types of people. Cora and Lindsay teach us the value of being a good friend. Jonathan teaches us that entrepreneurship can open many doors. And finally, Samantha and Amy teach us that changing one's path can be the key to moving forward to the next phase of life. Through the afternoons and evenings we've spent together, your life lessons made it into the classroom, into my office, and many evenings, I left the building thinking about you, about your struggles, your courage, and most importantly, your strength. As you move on to the next phase of your lives, keep increasing your wisdom. Share your lessons with others. You have earned this diploma. You have grown from your life experiences, and you have what you need to keep succeeding in your life. Tonight is truly the beginning of the rest of your life. With that, I'd like to welcome Superintendent Greenberg to share some remarks with you. <laughs> Parents, grandparents, brothers, sisters, all family members and friends, welcome. 
Graduates, congratulations. As always, it is a pleasure and honor to say a few words at this graduation ceremony, which celebrates and honors your hard work, and to let you know the best is yet to come. In thinking about this speech, I came across a quote from Marie Curie that I think is appropriate for this evening. You may remember that Marie Curie was a noted physicist and chemist at the turn of the 20th century. As a matter of fact, she was the first woman to win a Nobel Prize, and she was the first woman to win two Nobel Prizes, first person, actually, to win two Nobel Prizes, the first in physics and the second in chemistry. She had a great quote regarding perseverance, and it goes like this. Life is not easy for any of us, but what of that? We must have perseverance and, above all, confidence in ourselves. We must believe that we are gifted for something and that this thing must be attained. There are three key words in this quote. Perseverance, confidence, gifted. Perseverance, you have, by your presence here tonight, demonstrated the ability to overcome obstacles, bounce back from adversity, and keep your eye on the prize. All, all successful people carry this trait. Confidence. Confidence grows out of the ability to persevere, to know that setbacks are something to be learned from, that you can adjust and overcome, that you are willing to extend outside of your comfort zone and try new things. Gifted. All of us are gifted in some way. The key is to identify that gift, nurture it, and practice it. Find yours if you have not done so already. Use it, practice it, and doors will swing open. Then, use your perseverance and confidence to walk through those doors into a world of your own making. You, our graduates, are on your way. Great success, and know that the best is yet to come. Congratulations. And I'd like to introduce Mr. Steve Young from the school board chairperson to say a few words as well. Before I start, I'd like to thank you, and that is for turning these people around. This is the first time I've had an opportunity to speak. And usually when I do, I have to ask them to turn around and look at the parents because frankly, you guys are the reason that they're up here. You know, you kept pushing them. You kept making sure that they were doing the right thing. You kept making sure that they came to school. And you're gonna be there tonight when they get home to talk about this incredible, incredible opportunity. Look, we had one hell of a winner. Can I say that in school? <laughs> Mr. Parent? Okay. It's your last night, so if you guys want to say it, you know, feel free. But we had one hell of a winner. And what I want you to think about is I want you to think about the flowers that ended up showing up here after winter. And I know when the guys are over there rolling their eyes already, but think about this, because I bet you can come up with one of these flowers that matches you guys. What about the dandelions? You know, they taste pretty good before the flowers come out if you make them into a salad. What about the roses, the ones that are red and the ones that are white? What about the daffodils that are up by Max Apples in the spring when you drive by? And they're all there by the white farmhouse. What about the lilacs, the purple lilac, the state flower? What about how they smell? What about how they make you feel? What about the flowers in the fields? What about those ones hiding in the woods that nobody wants to find them, the lady slippers? Beautiful, beautiful lady slippers. You're not supposed to touch them. And you're not supposed to pick them. And you're not even supposed to move them. But they're out there looking for somebody to find them. But you guys don't remind me of any of those flowers because, frankly, I don't know any of you. And I'm sorry for that. But parents, I don't know them. You know them, and the staff knows them. So what you remind me of is a crocus. The crocus is the first flower that comes up in the spring. On Easter Sunday, I was walking to church in another community, and I saw them by the side of the road, and it made me think of adult Ed. 
because here they were, the ground was still absolutely frozen, and their round little tips were coming up out of the ground like little heads trying to emerge, because they always come up. No matter how hard the ground is, no matter how frozen it is, and even if there's snow, they still work their way through it. And that's what you guys have done by getting through this program. So tonight, when you take those hats off and throw them, or you take them home and you put them in the closet, and you take your tassel and put it on the mirror, or you put your tassel on your car, car uh, the thing you look behind you with, Think about that. Think about the crocus and think about the fact that you have emerged and you guys can get through anything. And I know you can. My best employee was one of you guys once. She's a single mom with three kids and beyond the best employee. She's going to run our company one day because she made it through this kind of program. Congratulations, guys. This class's faculty speaker is Mrs. Crystal Rich. Good evening, graduates, parents, grandparents, and family friends. My name is Crystal Rich, and I am the face behind the screen for our online platform, Odysseyware, here in our adult education program. I have been lucky enough to have many of you in day school before. <coughs> Some of you have taken classes with me online. Others, I have not had the pleasure of meeting. Ironically, I'm connected to all of you. Just over seven years ago, in November of 2007, five months after marrying the love of my life, we learned that we were expecting a child. Immediately, my excitement for the future changed and the worry of my ability to parent this little life set in with full force. Every new parent questions their financial stability, their discipline beliefs, and their ability to adequately provide. I remember agonizing over the little things and wondering how we were ever gonna do it. Months later, I wobbled into a pottery shop with an eager group of friends to paint something pink and brown for my daughter's new bedroom. As I mulled over a list of potential quotes to include in this one particular piece, one quote caught my eye. There are two gifts we should give our children. One is roots and the other is wings. Suddenly, the worries I had and the ones I once agonized over seemed to fade away. Roots and wings, I could do that. On Wednesday, I will celebrate my 33rd birthday. As I gain another year on the tally sheet, the memories of my past slowly fade further and further from my grasp. Faces become blurred, and what once were treasured events are now replaced with more recent journeys through time. 15 years ago, on my 18th birthday, I graduated from Alvern High School under the beating rays of the sun during an unbearably hot evening. Like many of you, I grew up in a small, quaint house on Garden Drive in Litchfield, New Hampshire. Campbell High School was only a dream in my younger years, not ready for occupants when I entered high school. Therefore, I was landed in the big halls of Alvern. Litchfield, as I'm sure many of you will agree, is an interesting place to grow up. No street lights, lots of corn, and one place to hang out, Mel's Tea Off. We came to London Dairy for groceries. I remember asking my mom why the store was so far away and dreading the drive to and from. Not much has changed in the years since I have left. Griffin still looks the same as it did when I was there in first grade. Darapon's fields are still littered with children and there are still no street lights. My parents just recently sold their dream house there and my brother, whose name resides on a plaque as a member of the first class to graduate from Campbell, moved his family north. When I drive through town now to pick up pizza at my favorite restaurant, Romano's, I'm reminded of the smells and sights that have given me roots. The place I called home for the first 22 years of my life and the place that made me who I am today. 
After high school, my story continued at Plymouth State College. While college provided me with opportunity, the Londonary School District has given me wings. Here in these halls, like you tonight, I have become all that I dreamed of being. I've coached, I've advised, and I've taught. Your journey has brought you here to this spot at this time for this reason. You've earned your wings. Many of you have met unspeakable challenges and overcome them. You've cleared paths, struggled through, and met your goals. You've put in hours of work hoping to provide opportunities for yourself, and you've done just that. I began teaching here 11 years ago. During those 11 years, life has thrown me some curveballs. Like you, I've loved and I've lost. I've grown and I've changed. I've led and I've followed. I've fought and I've won. Because of you, we continue on. As educators, you are the reason for which we live. You are, your inspiration makes our lives meaningful. You lift us up you challenge us, and most importantly, you make us very proud. American poet E.E. E. Cummings once said, it takes courage to grow up and become who you really are. Your courage is undeniable, your strength commendable, your perseverance admirable. In the years to come, you will face more challenges, you'll make tough decisions, you'll laugh, you'll cry, and you'll learn. You your roots have shaped you into the person you are today, but your wings will allow you all, allow all of your dreams to come true. A. A. Milne, author of the famed Winnie the Pooh series, sought to remind us, always remember that you're braver than you believe, stronger than you seem, and smarter than you think. You're also loved more than you'll ever know. You always have a home here in the halls of LHS, we wish you the very best of luck as you enter the next phase of your life. Congratulations. All right, and my favorite part of the evening is our student speaker, Meg Plord. Um, who has read several books aloud to her classmates. She's kind of like the voice of the English classes on Wednesday night. So Meg, please come up, share your voice one more time. I'd like everyone to take a moment and think of something that they're scared of. Maybe it's spiders or flying on a plane or public speaking. About two years ago, my fear was leaving the house and social interactions and meeting new people and talking on the phone. I'm still pretty scared of that last one. So day school was tough for me. I was never good at waking up early and I worried a lot about what other students and teachers thought of me. When my anxiety was at its highest, I didn't even want to get out of bed. I tried out online schooling for a while, but I couldn't stay focused enough to complete it. I felt defeated, like maybe something was wrong with me because I couldn't figure out how to do something that seemed so easy for everyone else. In September of 2013, I joined the night school program. Honestly, I was pretty scared at first. I thought I'd be surrounded by a bunch of thugs, watched over by a prison guard disguised as a teacher. But all the kids were pretty much just like me, caught up in some bad situation or another. And I don't think I'd have made it through a single class without a certain amazing teacher or two. And here we are. We've fought to get here against adversity, against what other people thought we could do, sometimes against what we thought of ourselves. And we did it. And I'd like to think we're all the stronger for it. Adult Ed graduating class of summer 2015. I know we can go out there and do amazing things. We've got the tenacity, the strength of will to move mountains. We didn't give up, and that's all that matters. So go on and save lives, or change them, or make a phone call. I know you can. To everyone who believed in us, even when we didn't believe in ourselves, thank you. It means the world. Nice job, Meg. All right, we have one last presentation before a little musical number. Um, last fall, 
one of our adult ed teachers who's no longer with the program, Jim Shokat, donated a voucher to a community college, um, and he's continued to do that. So tonight, we are going to announce the recipient of that award and voucher. Mrs. Kelly Jaguer, one of our teachers, was going to present it, um, but she had a family emergency, so I'm going to speak on her behalf. She emailed me what she had written, and this is what she said about tonight's recipient. The recipient of tonight's award is a young woman who is in my Holocaust literature class. This student was not someone who merely showed up for class to put in the seat time. From the moment this student entered my classroom, I knew this was someone who took her education seriously. Whether it was a short in-class assignment or a longer, more involved semester research project, the work this student produced consistently reflected effort and thought. I also want to note that this particular student also had the support of her family. I was so pleased when she asked me if her father could attend a lecture by Holocaust survivor Kathy Preston. What more could a teacher hope for than for the work we do to carry beyond the classroom and make its way home to the dinner table? This parent even took the time to write a letter of appreciation to Mrs. Preston, which I mailed in along with the rest of the letters from the class. Because of her tremendous work ethic and the support of her parents, I know Victoria Hampton will continue to embrace her education and find future success and put the college voucher to good use. All right, and our last performance tonight is a musical number by one of our talented graduates, Skylyn Collins. And one of her teachers, Casey Roop, who will be accompanying her. So enjoy.
guys ready? So now the moment you've all been waiting for. We're going to pass out the diplomas. Up here is Mr. Hicks from Campbell High School. We have a great partnership. A lot of our graduates up here are from Litchfield. And Mrs. Mitchell is going to give you guys a flower. So you ready? Woo! You can do this. And you're going to come around. I'd also like the adult ed teachers to stand for a minute just to thank, thank you. Yep. They're going to go around and they want to shake your hands as you do this. This staff is outstanding. Right? You guys on board? Okay. Here we go. Without further ado, we'd like to announce the graduating class of 2015. Kathleen Elizabeth Arrigo. Adam Anthony Bowden. <laughs> Curtis Matthew Benedict. Skylin Sue Collins. Nice job. <laughs> Joseph Matthew Davidson. Samantha Lee Emerson. Victoria Lynn Hampton. Jonathan Philip Keating. Amy Maria Lavoy. Lindsay Ann Morlock. Shakora Ann Pierce. Meg Elizabeth Plord. I'll see you down there. Declan Paul Rutledge. Yeah, that's okay. That's... Anthony Mikel Santa Stefano. Sean Michael Sullivan. And finally, Nicholas Colby White. It's going to go around. All right, as they make their way back. They've got a lot of hugs to get in. It gets emotional over in that corner. <laughs> yep. I know. Uh, that's the charisma and charm we talked about earlier. Okay, as Nick makes his way back. Yep. <laughs> I just want to thank you guys again for making my first year in this job wonderful. No matter how badly or crazy the rest of my day is, you guys ironically ground me as far as I know that there's a higher purpose because you guys matter. And it's meant a lot to me to watch some of you grow since you came in as eighth graders and some of you just grow as you came in last January. 
so I'm very, very proud of you. And with that said, it's time to move your tassels from the right to the left. Ladies and gentlemen, may I formally introduce tonight's graduating class of 2015. You can stand up. You guys can stand up. You guys can stand up. Congratulations. And please grab some water, snacks, take pictures, and thank you all for coming.